Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News where we are discussing abrupt climate change. And as always, there's lots going on. I just grabbed uh, this article off of Facebook, uh, something Jennifer Hines had posted from today. And uh, from a site called the LAist, I guess. The title of this is This Heat Wave in LA Was So Bad It Burned Leaves off the trees and i wanted to read this because this is something that i've been talking about a lot uh documenting as much as i could um it just it looks bad and it's getting worse every single day there's more dead leaves more trees um and and bushes and plants just looking absolutely toasted i mean they look like they're toasted they look like somebody a giant came with a giant blow dryer and just or a torch and just torched them because they're they are burnt um in north in northridge marijuana plants wilted bright orange and patients were sunburned and bleached white in monrovia in anaheim the leaves on an avocado tree turned brown and died trees flowers and even cacti are getting scorched by extreme heat across Southern California. Most of the recent damage happened after a heat wave broke temperature records across the region last month. Um, she has a little graph here of the record highs. Uh, it was enough to make comedian uh, and Highland Park resident Mark Marin begin an episode of his podcast with a rant. The trees are burning, not from fire, but from a hot day, he said. I asked a gardener guy, I'm like, what's up with the trees? He said, I'm pretty sure the sun just burned them. Oh, is that all? The sun burned the trees? Is this unusual? Well, is it? Frank McDon McDonough works at the LA County Arboretum where lots of trees had crispy brown leaves. He said, it's not uncommon for individual trees to get scorched, but the extent of the damage around Southern California is definitely unusual. He thinks the extended period of cool, overcast weather in late spring made things worse. The plants weren't ready for it, and when we did get that heat, it just threw them for a loop. Has anyone noticed burned trees or other bad stuff happening to plants and trees because of this extreme heat? Uh, this is a tweet. Yes, my backyard is full of scorched camellias from July, the July Inferno. It's like Desconso <clears throat> without the expert staff. I took these pics during that 113 degree Friday when the deer came to rest in our shade. Just like people, plants tend plants sweat to stay cool when it heats up. It's technically called transpiration. Alexandra Pavavarov, a visiting assistant professor at Whittier College who studies the effect of extreme heat on plants, says this works great to cool leaves down until plants don't have enough water to transpire. If they don't have the water to support the sweating, that's when they're in big danger, she said. What can I do to help them? Yvonne Savio, writes, who writes the Gardening in LA blog, recommends four things. Put plants in the shade or cover with a cloth. Don't prune the dead leaves off. Don't fertilize them. Don't overwater them. McDonough has an additional tip, painting trunks and large branches white to help the tree reflect heat. Interesting. <clears throat> Climate scientists say summer in LA might be one big heat wave in the future. <laughs> That's a scary thought, especially for plants. I mean, we're actually, we just have one big heat wave right now. I don't know what they're talking about in the future. Scary thought, especially for plants, unlike humans, they can't crank, crank up the AC or turn on the sprinklers to cool off. That means we may need to plant different kinds of trees and plants in the future, especially because many of SoCal's ornamental plants simply aren't adapted to this climate. There's a whole palette of trees that came with the people because the nurserymen got trees imported from the Midwest and they began selling them, said Greg McPherson 
an urban forest researcher with the U.S. Forest Service, Forest Service in Davis, told KPCC. That makes them especially vulnerable to extreme heat. Researchers with the University of California Cooperative Extension are doing a 20-year-long study to find out what to replace them with. Most of the species they're testing are from Australia, Arizona, or New Mexico because they're expecting LA's climate to be a lot more desert-like in the future. Have you been noticing changes in your neighborhood linked to the heat? Uh, and I certainly have. Um, we had a really strange, I ran into something really strange today. We had an, well, we had a, an anomaly, which was that um, mid LA, central LA was hotter than in the valley here where I live. Just, um, I was at work and I was driving and all of a sudden I could just feel the heat just like, just radiate, radiating down through the um, windshield of the car. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I, you know, I checked my car temperature said 104 degrees. Um, the phone said 96 degrees or 97 or something like that. And um, it was just incredibly hot all of a sudden out of nowhere. And I was, it was just very bizarre. Um, so we ended up just like heating up really, really quickly. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of a little bit of a cooler day. It started out that way, but it just didn't end up that way. We're also getting um, a lot more moisture in Southern California, um, a lot more humidity. I just, you know, so also just to talk about this briefly, um, the persistent contrails seem to have disappeared. Uh, but what I've been noticing in Southern California is this like strange, weird, hazy cloud gauze stuff that shows up. And I, you know, <clears throat> I'm assuming it's natural. I assume it's natural, but it's just, it's like a strange, um, it makes me wonder because without this like cloudy, gauzy layer, and that's kind of what happened today was that there was, you know, earlier in the day, there was just this like cloud cover and it was kind of keeping things a little cool. And as the wind from the ocean blew the cloud towards the inland uh, area, the open, like what was open to like straight sunshine, like suddenly got super hot. And I, I, you know, just made me wonder like, are they, is there some kind of like experimenting going on? Are they working on some kind of cloud thing here? That makes me wonder, um, or it makes me suspect that maybe something else is going on. I don't know. And this is just all conjecture at this point, but um, because they, there are no con persistent contrails like anymore in LA. They have just totally and completely disappeared. Um, again, you know, for all the natural contrail people, if they're natural, where did they go? Uh, so it's just very strange. And so now I'm just noticing these weird, like, hazy kind of weird cloudy formations that kind of show up uh here and there kind of showed up today anyways moving on i mean i really if they're uh, they they know this is happening the powers that be know that this is happening and if they're not working to forestall it on some level i mean i just i don't know it would be nice if they were they were letting us know more of what's going on or if they're working on something big let us know or you know perhaps we need to be working on something big and are they you know are they going for it or what what's the deal um i don't know if you all heard about like the bunch of tropical storms in the pacific um i read today that one of the storms like ate the other storm or it you know basically absorbed it Always very interesting. It doesn't look like any of them are going towards land or going to affect anybody, but that's a lot of tropical storms. Um, obviously, warm waters abound.
I'm going to read something from the Arctic News. Um, who posted this? Uh, I think it was Void. <clears throat> Arctic News, this is called Peaks Matter. When calculating how much warmer we can expect it to get, climate models typically use linear projections based on temperature averages, such as annual global average temperatures, daily temperatures that are averages between day and night, etc. The problem is that this downplays the danger, as average temperatures are unlikely to kill people. When lives are at stake, peaks matter. Local maximum temperatures can be good indicators for the maximum heat stress that can be expected in the area. Ocean heat on the move toward Arctic Ocean. The top right image shows that on August 2nd, 2018, I don't know if this is part of the same post or just another part, but I'm gonna read on because it's just good information. Uh, on August 2nd, 2018, the sea surface near Svalbard was 19.5 C or 67.1 Fahrenheit at the green circle, 14.1 uh, C or 25.4 Fahrenheit warmer uh, than 1981 to 2011. Um, that's a lot. The high sea surface temperatures, temperature is an indicator of the temperature of the water below the surface, which in turn is an indicator of the amount of ocean heat that is entering the Arctic Ocean from the Atlantic Ocean. Ocean heat is carried by the Gulf Stream from the North American coast toward the Arctic Ocean as illustrated by the images below and on the right. High methane levels warn about seafloor methane methane releases. Warming of the Arctic Ocean comes with the danger of methane releases from sediments that hold huge amounts of methane in the form of hydrates and free gas. Um, so high methane levels at Barrow, Alaska, July 31st, uh, up in the 2300, 2400 parts per billion range. Excuse me if I'm yawning, it's late. And I seem to have run out of, run out of gas. <clears throat> the image on the right illustrates the danger of showing high methane levels at Bar Barrow, Alaska, in July 2018. When making projections of heat stress, it is important to look at all potential warming elements, including albedo changes, changes to jet streams and sea currents, higher levels of methane, high levels of water vapor, etc. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas, causing huge warming immediately after entering the atmosphere. While this warming will be felt most strongly where that methane was released, methane can therefore contribute strongly to local temperature peaks. On the morning of August 6, 2018, mean global methane levels were as high as uh, 1,896 parts per billion at uh, two, uh, 293 millibars. More importantly, peak levels that afternoon were as high as 3,046 parts per billion, as illustrated by the image on the right. That is insane. Most importantly, the image shows that the likely origin of those high levels in the Arctic Ocean, which should act as a stark warning of things to come. Further contributors to heat stress. Next to temperature, humidity is of vital importance. A combination of high temperatures and high humidity is devastating. A recent study shows the risk of deadly heat waves is significantly increased because of intensive irrigation in specific regions. The study points at a relatively dry but highly fertile region known as the North China Plain, a region whose role in that country is comparable, comparable to that of the Midwest and the US. That increased vulnerability to heat arises because the irrigation exposes more water to evaporation, leading to higher humidity in the air than would otherwise be present at present and exacerbating the physiological stresses of the temperature. The image below shows a forecast of perceived temperatures in China on August 7, 2018. August 7, 2018 temperature in China is forecast to be as high as 36.4 C or 97.4 Fahrenheit which at 68% relative humidity makes it feel 
like for uh, 54.1 C or 129.3 Fahrenheit. Good Lord. The green circle highlights an area that is forecast to score high on the misery index and that is centered around a location on the coast of the Poyang Lake, which is connected to the Yangtze River. Temperatures there are forecast to be as high as 36.4 C or 97.4 Fahrenheit. At first glance, this may not look very high, but a relative humidity of 68% is forecast to make it feel like, again, 54.1 C or 129.3 Fahrenheit. This translates into a wet bulb temperature of 31.03 uh, C or 87.86 Fahrenheit. The image on the right shows relative humidity. Also note the cyclones lined up on the Pacific Ocean. Cyclones can increase humidity, making conditions worse. The high sea surface temperature anomalies that are common in the West Pacific contribute to warmer air and stronger cyclones carrying more moisture towards Asia. Another image on the right, Cyclone Shanshan, Shanshan is forecast to cause waves as high as 17.34 uh, meters or 56.9 feet near Japan on August 9th, 2018. Whoa. If humidity keep kept rising, a temperature of 36.4 C at a relative humidity of 91% would result in a wet bulb temperature of 35 C. No amount of sweating, even in the shade and in front of strong winds or fan, can cool the body under such condition, conditions, and it would be lethal in a matter of hours in the absence of air conditioning or cold water. There are, there are further factors that contribute to make specific areas virtually uninhabitable. The urban heat effect is such a factor. El Nino is another one. Land-only temperature anomalies are higher than anomalies that are averaged for land and oceans. As temperatures keep rising, heat waves can be expected to intensify while their duration can be extended due to jet stream blocking. The situation is dire, calls for a comprehensive and effective action as described in the climate plan. Below, Paul Beckwith, so there's a video, Paul Beckwith video embedded here, warns that parts of the world will soon be rendered uninhabitable. <clears throat> sooner, sooner than later, unfortunately. Um, Thought I had one more thing to read in here. One moment. Also, guys, I don't know if you've been obviously you've been following. You know, most of you or many of you have been following uh, some of Margot's videos and uh, some of Robert Scribbler's videos. Uh, the Arctic ice. I just I I just popped in on climate reanalyzer today and um, it is looking pretty thin and rather grim. Uh, I'm hoping that we make it through these next couple of months without losing a good chunk of that ice, but I, I'm, it's not looking good guys. I mean, we, we continue to get record heat in the Arctic. We continue to get uh, Greenland today was above freezing. Um, it's just, things are really starting to cascade. Um, towards uh, just a downward, we're in a downward spiral, straight up, and there's no other way to really describe what's going on. And it's amazing to me. <laughs> uh, we're we're just seeing the very, you know, we're seeing the edges of the spiral, and what people don't don't understand is once we start getting deeper into that spiral, how quickly 
things are going to change. Um, indeed, brace for impact. Indeed, uh, get, get yourself in order. Um, this, is, this is real and this is really serious. I'm going to read this last article for this video. Europe gets a scorching preview of how climate change will affect the continent. This is from August 4th. Hot weather has touched all of the continent, but it has had the most impact in northern countries unaccustomed to sustained heat, suggesting that hard years lie ahead. In your, northern Europe, this summer feels like a modern day version of the biblical plagues. Cows are dying of thirst in Switzerland. Fires are gob gobbling up timber in Sweden. The majestic Dachstein Glacier is melting in Austria. In London, stores are running out of fans and air conditioners. In Greenland, an iceberg may break off a piece so large it could trigger a tsunami that destroys settlements on shore. Last week, Sweden's highest peak, uh, Kebnekazi Mountain, no longer was it in first place after its glacier tip melted. Southern Europe is even hotter. Temperatures in Spain and Portugal are expected to reach 105 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit this weekend. On Saturday, several places in Portugal experienced record highs. Over the past week, two people have died in Spain from high temperatures and a third in Portugal. The high temperatures were being driven higher across across the Iberian Peninsula by hot air mass moving northward from Africa, which is bringing dust from the Sahara Desert, meteorologists say. The dust gave the sky a dark yellow hue in some places. But in the northernmost latitudes where the climate is warming faster than the global average, temperatures have been the most extreme, according to a study by researchers at Oxford University and the World Weather Attribution Network. By analyzing data from seven weather stations in Northern Europe, the researchers found that a clo the closer a community is to the Arctic Circle, the more the summer's heat stood out in the temperature record. A number of cities and towns in Norway, Sweden, and Finland had hit all-time highs this summer, with towns as far north as the Arctic Circle recording nearly 90 degree temperatures. Not only is much of Northern and Western Europe hotter than normal, but the weather is more erratic. Torrential rains and violent thunderstorms have alternated with droughts in parts of France. In the, in the Netherlands, a drought, rather than the rising seas, is hurting its system of dikes because there is not enough fresh water counter, countering the seawater. The preliminary results of, of the Oxford study found that in some places, climate change more than doubled the likelihood of the summer's European heat wave. In the past, we had this kind of heat uh, wave once every 10 years, and now we have them every two years or something like that, said Francois-Marie Brion, a climatologist and deputy director of the Laboratory of Climate and Environmental Science, a research, a research institute affiliated with France's National Center for Scientific Research. That's really the sign of climate change. We have heat waves that aren't necessarily more intense, but that are more and more frequent. Runways buckle, temperatures that used to be seen as outliers, like those in the summer of 2000, 2003, when at least 70,000 people died across Europe, will become the norm for summer after 2060, okay. said Jean Juzel, who was vice chairman of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007 when it won the Nobel, Nobel Prize. Occasional heat waves could push temperatures in Europe toward 120 degrees unless there is a substantial slowdown in global warming trends, he said. What do you think the likelihood of that is? This really is to enter into another world, Juzel said. This is a world that France and Western Europe are not used to. For Western Europe, this is truly a major change of climate if we do not fight efficiently against global warming. The Dachstein glacier, glacier is one of the more dramatic symptoms. The glacier is melting so fast that you can see it with your naked eye, meteorologist Klaus Reingruber told journalists. It has been melting incrementally for many years, but the change became more visible this summer after the hottest June on record since 1767, 
when Austria started keeping track according to researchers at Innsbruck University. For Europeans living with the heat day to day, a raft of practical problems has become worrisome. Climate change is gradually becoming understood in the region as something that will alter many aspects of how Europeans live, potentially destroy or diminish some parts of the economy and halt beloved local traditions such as the summer barbecue, which was banned this year in parts of Sweden to reduce the chance of fire. In Europe, each year, about 5% of Europeans have to face an extreme climate event, but that, be that a heat wave, a flood, or a drought. But in the second half of the century, in the, if the global warming is not checked, we could see two Europeans out of every three who have to face extreme climate events, said Giselle, citing a recent study in the Lancet Planetary Health. It used to be winter storms that closed airports and delayed flights, but this summer in the northern German city of Hanover, the 50-year-old runways buckled in the 93-degree heat and travelers were delayed for hours. Across northern Germany, trees, especially saplings, have been hit hard by the drought and cities have been calling on citizens to help local trees. They have responded by dragging garden hoses from their houses or sloshing pails of water to nearby trees. Throughout the Alps, but especially in eastern Switzerland and western Austria, as well as in Ireland, the water shortages have been so severe that there is not enough hay in the pastures to feed local milk cows. So farmers are having to dip into their winter feedstocks, diminishing what they will have for their livestock later in the year. In Switzerland, where the herds are led to the high pastures in summer to graze, the drought has stranded cows without water. Farmers have turned to the country's helicopter association and the Swiss Air Force to transport tens of thousands of gallons of water every week to keep the herds alive. The situation is very serious, said Christian Garman, a spokesman for the Swiss Helicopter Association. For thousands of years, the cows could get water at small watering holes. Now they are, in, they are dry in many places. The last time the association undertook an aid mission was in summer of 2003, but this year the situation is more extreme, with some farmers considering slaughtering their herds, Garmin said. The association's managing director, Reto Resch, said they are running 30 to 40 trips a day, transporting 250 gallons on each run. In France, the weather has not broken, has not broken heat records so far, but it is part of an overall trend. This July was one of the three hottest on record. And subtle changes changes are taking place country, countrywide. Among them are rising sea levels, which Brayon, the climate scientist, fears are being under, underestimated. Today, the sea level is increasing by three millimeters per year, or between three and four millimeters. Braun said, one might think that's not very much, but I would insist otherwise because it is completely irreversible. Even if we respect the Paris Climate Accord and manage to stabilize the temperatures at two degrees higher than in the pre-industrial era, the level of the sea will continue to rise for many hundreds of years. There are coastal cities that are already condemned, Braun said. Among them are areas of the Camargue on the Mediterranean and Brittany, both on the English Channel and along the Atlantic coast, and in the Vendée and Gironde, the area near Bordeaux, and some places that is already affecting land and house values as well as bird habitats. Wonky flowers, the heat forced the French Energy Commission EDF on Saturday to shut down a fourth nuclear reactor, this time one at, at the country's oldest nuclear plant at Fessenheim in eastern France. Since Thursday, nuclear reactors and three power plants near the Rhine and the Rhone rivers, including Fessenheim, have had to be temporarily shut down. EDF said the decision was made to avoid overheating the rivers. In England, as in almost all of Europe, growing patterns are changing. The drought has increased food prices and staples may be in short supply this fall. Britain's Met Office Weather Service said July was the country's third warmest month in more than a century. In July, farmers had to fly in lettuce from overseas to meet contracts with supermarkets. A cargo firm said it flew in 30,000 heads of let lettuce from Los Angeles during one hot July weekend alone. The torrid summer has taken its toll on the country's flowers. The supermarket chain Morrison's has begun selling wonky flowers that have not developed properly. The drought in Ireland means that income for dairy farmers is likely to be cut in half this year, said uh, Tegask, the state's farming advisory body. 
in Moscow, as temperatures rose to close to 86 Fahrenheit, city authorities opened hundreds of cool rooms where residents could rest amid air conditioning with water dispensers and medical attendants. Although that temperature is far below the blazing heat hitting Southern Europe, it's well above the Russian capital's average August maximum of 73. Sweden has faced some of the most severe repercussions from the hot weather, starting with the forest fires that destroyed more than 61,000 acres of timber, according to David Sundstrom of the Swedish Contingencies Agency. Wildfires are still burning, although significantly fewer than when they were at their height. The drought has severely hurt production of the iconic Scandinavian bilberries, similar to blueberries, cloudberries, similar to raspberries and blackberries, but often yellow or orange, and red lingonberries. Sylvie Bjorkman, 62, said he buys berry crops from farmers and brings 1,000 workers from Thailand each year to pick them. In a telephone interview from Vasterbotten in Sweden's north, where he was looking for berries for his pickers, he said bilberry prices are up 30 to 35% because the hot weather has meant a smaller harvest. The cloudberry harvest was down because it was too hot for the alpine fruit. We had an early season and the cloudberries ripened really fast, said Bjorkman, adding that the berry season had outstripped the arrival of the pickers who came too late. Uh, everything is changing very quickly. Um, <laughs> and it's very interesting to kind of watch the news, everything else that is going on um, in the world politically or um, what have you. It's just, it's amazing to watch the news and, and go like, but there's this other thing going on that <laughs> that pretty much threatens to disrupt everything else um, that's happening and not, not a peep, not a word about the impending danger. <clears throat> um, just keep spreading the word, um, is all that we can do and watch, watch things progress. Um, we shall see what happens in the next few months. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping for some more norm, normalcy myself. Um, I, you know, I don't know. A part of me wants to keep on just, uh, keep on going. Uh, at don't we all, but, um, I don't know. Crossing fingers. Um, think happy thoughts. I don't know. Have good dreams tonight. If you can. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so. The link's below. Until next time, peace.